Welcome, welcome, really very, very much to Conversations. A pleasure to have us a guest, Howard, uh, um, Howard, um, um, <laughs> Howard, uh, Harold, uh, 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 Weinberg, Weinberg, yeah, that's right. That just slipped my mind for a second. And we've done programs with him in the past, and he's a major fellow. We got him done, distinguished uh, producer of uh, good video and film fair and so forth. He's been involved in the industry for a long time. He knew so many people uh, that he helped get together, not the least of which was, I guess, um, the the uh, uh, McNeil Lara and that kind of thing he's That's been associated right. with. And uh, Howard, welcome. So very much to conversation. We've been here getting all this going, so I'm sorry I just... Uh, Thank uh, you. I love the way you have the cups floating. It's uh, well, fantastic. that's true. That's a tricky thing. Mm -hmm. It's just magic, you know? You, know you have to have magic. like you know, yeah. You know what the background is? Yeah. No, I don't. This Tell me what that is. This though. is Namjoon Paik's oh, yeah. uh, uh, superhighway, electronic superhighway. Okay. What that, is it? That okay. first I saw uh -huh. in 1995, I believe, right. at Holly Solomon Gallery in Soho. Okay. Now it resides in the Smithsonian American Museum of Art. Not really, really. Yes. Yeah. And there's a whole. There are a couple other. Yeah, explain pieces of his up yeah, there. Right. Okay, please. But each of the state mm -hmm. states has imagery. Yeah. Uh, that is associated with that state. I'll be so darn. if you went to Arkansas, yeah, you would see Charlotte Moorman, who was yeah. Peg's muse, and uh, a, uh, and cellist, the top cellist. Yeah, right. Yeah. And um, you'd see Hillary Clinton. Okay. If you go to Iowa, you would see the Howard. The, uh, the well, not me, but yeah. the, you'd see the political candidates. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because Iowa primaries. What do you mean if you go? You mean no? Like if you if you watch, if you because this this is a still image, but that's going on. You mean that's time. active. That's active. That's a, that's Absolutely. A, that's an active thing. Yeah. And they have. Is there quite a little bit, of, say, Illinois, New York, or Michigan, like that? Is there quite a little bit of information there? Well, or it's just a, a couple of facts, or are there a couple hundred, or what? No, you know, you, mostly imagery. Imagery, and oh. you'll look at it and you'll say, "Oh my God, I recognize that." What, what is? What is? You know? Yeah, that's really. And good. people will stay there for and several did, hours. Did, did you knew him, huh? I knew him. Yes. Yeah. In fact, major figure. Yeah. This Friday. Yes, sir. The what is it? The twentieth. Yeah. Of of July. Uh huh. I, if Paik were still living, he would be. 86 years old. Wow. Okay. And yeah. he was an amazing, amazing. He was the first video artist. Really? Yes. Okay. For, are you for first like number one in terms well, of I, I, uh, in chronology my or in terms of his contributions? I think yeah. both. Really? Yeah. That major. Yep. Spell it out a little bit. I didn't know well, him. I never met him. Never knew him. But you knew him. I so. knew him. Yeah. In a couple of different ways. Please. Once. Uh, I saw some of his video art that he did for WGBH in Boston. Okay, which yeah. he did before he. I'm, and he he was. Uh, I mean, he was he was funny, and he was brilliant. That's good. That's good. Yeah, and imaginative, and his work is still relevant. Right now, he's got a show in Boston. Uh -huh. uh, he's got a show at uh, in California. Uh, Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. uh, I keep getting, you know, friends of mine who know that I. These know are not constant shows. These are shows of the moment, like yeah, you, the moment. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, right, right, yeah. right. And you knew him well. I yeah yeah. Well, he friends? he called yeah. me from yeah. from Korea one night uh -huh. and asked me if I would uh, uh, make a film about Charlotte Mormon after oh, she yeah. had died, and and I said yes. And we had almost no money to do it. Yeah, right. So okay. I had, but I had to do some reporting. And yeah, I when didn't get to. When would that have been? That was '95. That was that it, it was released okay. in '95. Yeah, it was released. So you but went ahead and did it. Oh yeah, but earlier. Yeah. I got a call from Peg. He had he had the first exhibition for a video artist. Yeah. That was at the Whitney Museum. Okay. And yeah. Uh, John Hanhart organized that, and then he went on to organize. Another exhibition of Pakes at the Guggenheim Museum, and then he went to Washington and organized a further exhibition. Um, but Pake, he was, I, I would, I mean, I, I was just telling somebody the other day yeah. that I, I happened to be in Paris and I 
go into this museum in the Pompidou, famous museum, and, yeah. and there's the Namjoon Peg's clock, uh, uh, yeah, the phases of the moon, uh -huh. that which has now been restored in Santa Barbara. Okay, right, okay. So, now, how did you come to meet him? Well, how I, close were you? Were you friends? Or well, I were we were friends associate? with it. We were. He called me up one. I mean, several things. I was going to yeah. say, they, he had somebody call me up in 1992 when he had this first exhibition right. at the Whitney Museum, uh -huh. and he said to me, um, "Would you find out whether or not Channel Two?" The CB WCBS TV yeah, yeah. is going to come to the Whitney Museum on Saturday and uh, film our robot. A robot. And so, I, as it happened at the time, I knew the uh, the person who was at local station Channel mm -hmm. Two. Mm -hmm. I call up and they said, "Yes, they're going to come." And I call him back and he said, "Well, oh my God, we have to repair the ro robot because he had this gimmick. It's his robot, which K four. Four, five, six, I think it was. That was the name of it. Yeah. 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 And he would have it crash into an automobile. And so, so the robot had to have surgery. Or <laughs> they were, yeah, absolutely. Nuts and bolts. They, they had and to whatnot. keep repairing yeah. the robot. Yeah, right, 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 right. So do it. Yeah. And uh, he. Uh, uh, so th then I said to myself, wait a minute. Th he'd be a perfect story for CBS Sunday Morning. First retrospective for, for uh, a. Um, Video artist. Now, were you associated with I, that? Yeah, I was a producer at CBS. You were, uh, yes, yeah, so when you were a producer at sub okay, okay. So, I write a memo. <coughs> now, the way the show worked, <coughs> mm -hmm. mostly we didn't suggest stories. Unlike when I worked at 60 Minutes, where we always suggested stories. Okay. Sunday morning, Shad Norshield, who created the show, yeah. said he had to have something to do. He and Bud Lamro, his, his deputy. Uh -huh. And so they came up with the ideas. Right. So in this case, I sent him a memo, you know, took it down to his secretary at the end of the hall. Yeah. And, uh, you know, maybe half an hour later he comes back and he's there. And he says, you want to do this story? And I said, oh, yeah. He said, well, I gave it to another producer yeah. who said it wasn't right for Sunday morning. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I said, it's perfect for Sunday morning. Yeah, right. You know, it's about arts and it's innovative and yeah. all this. And besides, it's the first retrospective any video artist ever received. Let's back up a little yeah. bit, okay? You've been in television work for a long time. You're out of Iowa originally. Well, out and of you Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah. I was born in Iowa, yeah. You were born in Iowa, but you've been in the television uh, realm for quite a while. You helped. My McNeil first, Lara, well, right, yeah. Among my, my first job was at WISN in Milwaukee. How did you get attracted to television as something to dedicate because your life to and what your work in? I think because um, I always like uh, movies, pictures, yeah. and, and I always like. I always took slides. I mean, for example, when I was at Dartmouth, thirty-five millimeter. Yeah, yeah. Right. When I was at Dartmouth, mm. I had to make a choice. Yeah. Do you want to When you were at Dartmouth? Dartmouth. That's where you went to cool, I school. I went to school at okay. Dartmouth College. And what did you study there? I studied government. Government. Okay, good. So okay, that's yeah. my background yeah. in politics. Yeah. And all this <laughs> yeah, right, right. I do things. I thought come, you're such a, pol a political. No, 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 yeah, no. no. But yeah. the thing was, it was very innovative in that time. Mm -hmm. yeah, you were innovative. Well, I was maybe, but, but the school was. Yeah. I mean, I got to make my first movie there. Wonderful. Once right. I made a choice between... Uh, the Dartmouth, which is the newspaper, the oldest college newspaper in America. Didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And yeah. or the yearbook. Uh, so the yearbook I, for Dartmouth. Yeah, I couldn't. The Aegis, they called Why it. Why did you have to choose? Because you couldn't go on to be an editor of one or the other. And when did you graduate? Well, before you know, yeah. in your junior or senior year. Yeah, I see. Okay. Yeah. Right. So okay. I had to make a choice. Yeah. You know what I want to do? Choices. Choices. Absolutely. Choices. Yeah. So. I said newspaper, but I still was interested in photography. I took a course, a sociology course, and the assignment, it was a sociology of propaganda, and the assignment was... Interesting, yeah. Do a, um, do a slideshow uh -huh. and change the narration and show it both ways. So I did. And the odd thing was, it was amazing. The, the juxtaposition of the words and the pictures mm -hmm. created a whole different 
image. And it gelled in your own mind as something really yeah. worth dedicating yourself. It's dedicating yourself to? Well, I said, I said, what if these pictures moved? That yeah. was the thing. Oh. And there was a wonderful man at Dartmouth <coughs> then whose name was Blair Watson. Mm -hmm. And he ran the Dartmouth College uh, Film Society. Right, okay. And Blair, I later realized, mm -hmm. and he loved to fly planes. Right. And okay. in World War II, he was a fighter pilot. Wow. And he, uh, and he was in the same fighter squadron as a few years younger Robert Drew was. Oh, I don't and, know Robert And Robert Drew, Drew mm -hmm. was the American uh, mover and shaker who created the American version of Cinema Verite. Okay, okay. Direct yeah. cinema, yeah. they called it. Yeah. So everything was changing, and, that was pr and the first film was Primary in 1960. Okay. 60. And Robert Drew, Ricky Leacock, Richard Leacock, uh, who had worked with Robert Flaherty, and, uh, Clarity. Oh, uh, yeah. Nanook. Nanook, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and uh, Al Mazels and, and yeah, David right. Mazels. Uh, they still have a presence in New York, don't they? Right. The, the, only, Mazels, one, yeah. the only one of the, yeah. the original yeah. group that's yeah. still living in his 90s is um, uh, D.A. Penny, Penny Baker, Don Penny Baker. Uh, okay. But uh, I, I got, because I got my uh, uh, professor named Larry Pinkham, who was very open and said to me, uh, this was at Columbia Journalism School when I was there. You went there for a while after all this? And oh, are you yeah. Going, are you doing this chronological sort of I was trying to. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's hard. Right, okay. right, well, right. Because basically, they do interconnect. the filmmaking, yeah. I'd made yeah. this film. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then I got an internship uh -huh. in the summer of my senior year of college. Oh, but I got to go back. Okay. When I, <laughs> when I was a junior, yeah. um, I went to Europe on a vacation and in the streets of Munich I ran into this guy who had been uh, in college and he was one of the first people to go to junior year abroad at that time about the only place you could do a junior year abroad was uh, Sweetbriar College and he had gone there really? he managed I to get in what, what, now year it's are you, what year are you talking I'm talking about the summer of 61 Okay. So, yeah. and then, so we got together, We were, the Soviet Union was changing. To give you an idea of how it was changing, mm -hmm. the Lenin tomb, for about a year or so, oh. became the Lenin-Stalin tomb. Really? Okay, I didn't know, yeah. We raised the money, mm -hmm. when it first was there, in the summer of 61, it was a week before the Berlin Wall went up. And okay, yeah. And okay. it was by accident, I ran into this former classmate of mine, and he, he said he was going to Copenhagen, and I had a car, so I drove him to Copenhagen, and I was like the, I don't know, third or fourth person to know that he was secretly married. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and so we get there, and, the, and he has friends, and, I, and they say they're going to the Soviet Union. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a Khrushchev thaw, and how, how do you do that? He said, well, uh, there's a Scandinavian student uh, seminar. Uh -huh. And you just get a visa, but that's going to take you about nine days. So I stayed in Copenhagen, got my visa, and then I went to uh, uh, went to Leningrad, Moscow, and Kiev. Well, you were starting out around in Europe, yeah. Starting out in Helsinki. <laughs> and what were you? Were you were, was it? You were in the army for a while, or something? When was that? Was before. that before that? No, no, this was after. After you'd been because, in the army. Because what happened was you were drafted in the army. Yeah, but no, no. I signed up to, to be in the Army Reserves. No. Oh. But to not get ahead of myself, okay. in the summer of 60, well, I made this film because Blair Watson showed me a movie about making films. Uh -huh. And then he said, here, why don't you um, take this 1,300 feet of film. We went back to the Soviet Union. Uh, w yeah. And then we, uh, and I made this film. And I edited it myself on rewinds and all of that. Steenbeck? No, Steenbeck's didn't exist at that time. No, really? This is before Steenbeck's. Did you have to put pieces of paper in and things like that? Or do you <laughs> no, whatever, yeah. A little bit. Yeah. And I can't really remember whether we, I don't think we hot spliced. Maybe we did. We take yeah. but, this is but in any case, what happened was recently, yeah. recently, I was up at Dartmouth, and they told me they had restored this film. 
Okay, and no it, fitting. It, it added it on file there, or something. It's else? it's available on Canopy. Wow. Okay, I don't know Canopy. What it's is it? It's an educational site? Uh, site. Site. Okay, Canopy. K N O P Y. Yeah. I think it's a good name. And yeah. so here's the thing that goes out over the street when you're yeah. coming in the rain. Yeah. That's a protective thing. That's a good. <laughs> So that's anyway, a, it was an one idea. of the 50 films yeah. that they, they restored uh -huh. historically. And it was, it made all the, but that's what made the difference was that Blair Watson went out to the University Film Producers Association annual meeting mm -hmm. and they select the outstanding films of 19, in this case, 1961, 62. 61, 62 and mine was selected. Yeah. Uh -huh. So good, yeah. Uh, here I am at the Washington Post mm -hmm. writing obits and, you mm -hmm. know, and, and all this. With um, you're you're writing for a Washington Post in Washington. It, yeah, you were a writer or what? I was a, I was a writer, writer of what about film or news, what? No, no, no news. News writer, Just straightforward. Mostly, copy, yeah. mostly yeah. Uh, obits. No obits you know, and, and uh, crime and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and mm -hmm. um, so Takes that all was kinds, yeah. Mm. My God, mm. but it was great. Yeah, and this was before you were young. Yeah, before yeah. all that, you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it was a uh, uh, great opportunity. But that summer, I find out that it's won this award and I think good wow yeah well I'm, I'm going to law school yeah because my father wanted me to go to law school I got Did admitted to Harvard but I didn't go to Harvard I went to Stanford law Stanford law for Did you do your degree no I went one term and then I switched to broadcasting and film is that because you thought you'd be a better filmmaker than a lawyer because I was more interested in, in in film. Following your own lead again. Huh, Absolutely. Young man? Absolutely. Rather than what the bird says you should. Or That's exactly right? it. Is and this a tendency in the family? Or is this it was, you? I don't know why I did it. Have but you I, got I, good I, counsel <laughs> to help you through these moments when it's hard to know which way to go? Uh, no, good. Okay, good. Follow so your own lead. That's a good so idea. So that was great. And that was great. And uh, and then I, Vietnam was heating up. I mean, this was, after all, I was Vietnam was such a horror. Yeah, I, before ahead. I was at, at at Stanford in the fall of '62 mm -hmm. when Kennedy was assassinated. Yeah, when they all when mm -hmm. the uh, uh, when the Cuban Missile Crisis was there. That was the I was never so scared in all my life. Right, Lord. and that and that's the scariest time Duck until and today. Cover. Remember Duck and Cover? They had us. For those who are younger, they used to have us pr in the school. You have to get under your desk and duck and cover because the atomic bombs are coming. There's there's a great documentary, made absurd called Atomic Cafe. Yeah. Uh huh. Have you ever seen it? No. Well, it's going to show it when Film Forum yeah. reopens. I think August first. Is it opening again? Good. It's reopening. Yeah, I'm glad to hear and that. And they restored it. Indie yeah. Collect. This great. Is it still the same place? Yeah, well, well enlarged. I think they're going to have four screens instead good, of three. Good, 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 good. That's good news yeah, huh, for yeah. me, cinema. Well, documentaries. I was beginning are to wonder what's happening to the movie industry. Or well, the I got to tell you, process. documentaries are on the rise. Are they really? Okay, that's encouraging. If you encouraging, go down to Fifty Seventh yeah. Street, yeah, and you go to the river, there's yeah. a landmark theater. Okay, and there I saw RGB about Ruth Bader Ginsburg, which is an outstanding oh. film. Uh -huh. Made by a colleague of mine, uh, Betsy West, uh -huh. and a friend of hers, um, at Columbia, and this is Ruth Bader Ginsburg. It's an incredible story, yeah. and it does what it's most documentaries court, yeah. struggle to do. Yeah, yeah. It, it does a wonderful portrait mm -hmm. that's not a hagiography, mm -hmm. that really is a good portrait, and it deals with the issue and uh, her early uh, life what? of, of uh, women's yeah. women's Women, rights. Women. That, oh my God. That, they're getting to be very, very insistent on having those, aren't <laughs> yes, they? Yeah. Increasingly, <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. so it's, that's a fantastic. The other film mm -hmm. that has a public television mm -hmm. uh, angle is "Won't You Be My Neighbor" I, about won't Fred you Rogers. Be my neighbor, that's mm -hmm. yeah, Mr. Rogers. Mr. Yeah. Rogers, sweetheart, yeah, a great, great, yeah, film. yeah. I'm sorry that I didn't know. I worked. He was a wonderful presence. Did you for know the him? Kids. No. No, not at all. Only just on the screen, yeah. Because I I only kn knew him in passing when I was in Pittsburgh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, I wish I'd known him better. But I, I worked in Pittsburgh and made three. So years. you were caught with the video, the, the the filmic bug. Yeah. Yeah. I think wonderful. so. Wonderful. I think it's a wonderful creative so. thing, don't you? But and I don't. Is it got a lot to teach the world now? I think so. The, for, with those disciplines or the things that are involved in that and the 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 pioneers. You know, of who who did it, uh, who oh, set it up, right? Absolutely. It was coming off film. When did 
When did well, when you know did what's film interesting? actually emerge? They had they Well, this had is where Nam Jim Peg comes in. I mean, didn't they have films back at the turn of the century? They had records. They had films. The, the Lumiere brothers were 1895. 1895. And that, that was their first show. Was that the moon or something? No, that was before Which, that. What was that one? That was That one was, um, oh, God. Were they, they put it in the, yes, they hit it yes, in the face, yes. hit it in the eye. So that was them? before. But that would have that been was, uh, one of the first films. Yeah, that's right, yeah. right, right, right. But, but the first documentary film really was uh, the Lumiere Brothers. And a few years, several years ago, I visited a friend of mine in Paris, and we went to Lyon where, on, on the train. Yeah. And that's where they, they have the Lumiere uh, oh, factory really? and yeah. institute uh -huh. and library. Uh -huh. And you so that's when it sort of got started, right? 1895. Yeah. And you know that first thing, the, the we train? Had Phil, we had we had Brady had pictures of, of uh, Lincoln. Oh, yeah. Film. But the, no, those were, st well, uh, the, still. No, those are still films. Still films, yeah. Films, yeah. Films, still films. yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it uh, still was, what, uh, 1839, I think. Something like that, Something like right? that. Yeah, because they had Lincoln. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then it came up, uh, okay, and you were in on the film stuff, even at the turn of the century, 20th century or something, or, or you were cognizant of the work that was being done yeah. uh, in, in preparation for what was to come. I think so. Yeah, good. But, but good uh, the, uh, That's good grounding, yeah. Uh, and, and the thing was, film history is taught in schools now, Yeah, has been for years, but video history, which is what Nam June Paik really Do we was make a, a distinction? Right? Well, they do, no. oddly. Yeah. They make a distinction between film and TV, between uh, print no, you, I, I was saying not they, you. Or no, do, I, I, how do we place I, it? Or how I do like we, to yeah. be uh, involved in everything. In, involved in as many things as possible. Yeah, okay. I don't think it matters. It's I all, think that's a good attitude. It's all visual right. journalism for yeah. me. That's what I like about it. Yeah, right, right. And, right. Uh, and it's art. You, it's you a spectrum. You have, it's it's, it's an art. art. It's an art thing. Absolutely. Uh, you see it as an art thing. Absolutely. Yeah, right, yeah. right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. And you know a lot of the people that have been involved in that. Yep. Yeah, congratulations, well. really. And then you were also involved in your life from a previous program we did. In fact, the program is going to air later this week that we're taping, and this okay. one will be the next week. Right. Anyway, but anyway, with uh, McNeil Lara and getting a lot of people in the political context right. of television, which isn't necessarily artful, but well, it's involved with the television business. But like. I was very fortunate to work in a lot of very creative places. I mean, I, I worked... I would think you would be very unhappy anywhere else. <laughs> well... My, my, that's a, that's yeah. just a guess that I'm making yeah, I out think of being able to read I mean, people. I mean, I... Uh, when I worked at Eyewitness News... Okay. Uh, Al Primo created this family. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, okay. okay. That's okay. Uh, he created a television family. So who's El Primo? I El don't know. Primo. El Primo is like Eyewitness something News. Spanish. Yeah, you is should that Spanish. No, El Primo. Italian. You should. You, Italian. Yeah. yeah you should he's talk still to around. Him. He's still around. Wow! Somebody he's, who's still around. He's That's in right. vacation in Italy. Uh, yeah, something right. right now. Yeah. Anyway. But Al Primo. Al Primo started. He started this in Pittsburgh, mm. and then he took it to Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Then he came to New York, mm. and. Because I worked there twice when I first worked. You worked wor with him or in No, I worked with, with him, yeah. yeah okay. He wanted me to stay. Uh -huh. But this is when I went to Washington to work for the Public Broadcast Laboratory. Oh, and I did that okay. documentary in which Nam June Paik was. That's Nam June Paik. Yeah. Yeah, right, 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 right. And so you've been busy doing I've been that. busy. <laughs> did you ever have to do anything that you didn't want to do? No, let, let me well, put I a little you, different. You know what I'm saying. I'll give you a story. Did you ever have to go just because, I you know, tried to You know avoid what I'm saying. It. Yes. Yeah. For example, okay, I work with Bill Moyers. Bill Moyers is a giant. Yes, yeah. but he wanted me to do a half-hour film on William Loeb of the uh, Manchester, Loeb, uh, Manchester oh. Union leader. Oh, he was, I'm sorry, he I was, was thinking the Leopold and Loeb. <laughs> no, that's Leopold and Loeb. Yeah. My, my daddy, was, they were in the class. I think that that's uh, that's Clarence Darrow. Yeah. yeah, my daddy was in the class of '24 at Ann Arbor, and wow. one of the students in his class, the class of '26, was one of the brothers from Chicago that were involved in that. Wow, I think maybe both. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I think there were only about 40 people in his class. It was small. Fantastic. Yeah, Leopold and Loeb was just something else. But this was William Loeb. Yeah. Okay. And, and you know, the famous thing was. 
Ed, Ed Muskie went up there when he was uh, running for president. Yeah. And it was in a sort of a, it was snowing out, and people said that he cried. And they, and they called William Loeb, the editor of the Manchester Union Leader, who used to have these front page editorials yeah. and was a rabble rouser. They said he was the man who made Muskie cry. What, what, what was it about again? I'm sorry, it I was got the off primary. on Loeb. It was the I, it was, oh, I know, primary. I was off base with it Leopold and Loeb. It was the poli political yeah. primary. And you weren't talking about Leopold no, and no, Loeb. No, no, no. That was just in Loeb. I'm sorry, no, I got okay. off on a tangent. That's all right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but mm. uh, you know, some ideas can come out that yeah, way. Yeah, right. No, it's, it's been it's known fine. to happen sometimes. But um, I, but I said to, it's just my instinct. I said, I can't do a portrait that will be even-handed, that can be critical as well as, uh, you know, as well as positive. In a half an hour, I can't. And there was, there's not enough time to complain to convey the complexity. Could you do it in 35 minutes? No. Could you? I do said it I could do it. I said I could do it could in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> and and so, uh, sorry, but so he said no. Uh, no. He hired somebody <laughs> else to do that. Yeah. Oh. But <laughs> when, then he went along with me, and he said, and this his his executive producer said to me. Uh -huh. um, do you know who Woody Allen said destroyed the world? <laughs> and I said, Ooh, I yeah. No, I don't remember. He's don't. in Sleeper. He oh. said, uh, sometime in the future, a man named Albert Shanker <laughs> yeah, got right, a hold right. of the atomic Teacher, bomb. Teachers, yeah. <laughs> so I said, you want me to profile Albert <laughs> Shanker? He said, yeah, I'll give you a uh, an hour. So I said, oh my God, this is, this is great. So you did an hour? So I did Shanker? an hour on Albert Shanker. Yeah. And uh, I had done the reporting. You know, sometimes you can talk to people on the phone and late at night yeah. you get things that you wouldn't if you yeah. just talked to them in yeah, person. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Much I, as over a beer. Yeah, too. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. he I heard that yeah. he felt that he could become mayor of New York City in... Um, he uh, had ambition to be mayor, right? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know him at After all. After Ocean yeah. Hill, Bronzeville. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. Uh, anyway, and, and I knew this fact... And I and Bill went through at that time. We were shooting film, and it was like eleven minutes of reel, and it was it was like a prize fight. When you're talking film, are you talking uh, six millimeters, thirty-five millimeter, millimeter, sixteen millimeter video? No, no, six not video. All film. In this case. In this it, it, in this case, or up until that time. Up until about. Up until that time, chronological was all yeah, film. Yeah. The video hadn't uh, come up into until your life, up until yeah. like about. Probably somewhere post seventy five, you know. Uh, so that's when that's when video entered into to your change. into your over. The first video that, that I, I, <laughs> I edited yeah. was on two inch video. Two inch high beam? Yeah. And you had to yeah, yeah. look into yeah, a microscope. Right, right. Did you ever do that? No, I, I think I've done that kind and of thing. And, and, and yeah. you would coat the two inch a big tape. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and then you'd see, okay there, I can cut there. And mm -hmm. then you'd cut it, and you'd splice it, just like you used to do with audio tape. Yeah, right. And that all went away. Electri we started to do it electronically, and yeah, uh, made a huge difference. You know. So how do you like the trend of things in terms of filmic expression, and what's going on? Well, I think people have gotten very good at using the tools and all of that. You do. Yeah, but I think that is uh, it a thing that can be taught, or is it a thing? Uh, well, yeah, a lot of it can be taught. A yeah, lot of you taught. do teach. I have people. Talked. You've yes, helped a I, lot of people uh, be able to pick up uh, yep. the cudgel, as it were, and c proceed. Yeah. Yes, Congra yes. For that, I thank you very much. Yeah. 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 Well, it's. Um, I, Joe, I was going to say that if we could look at the beginning. Okay. Of what this, is it we're going to look at? This. This is the first five minutes. Oh, five minutes. Okay. Five minutes Good. of Nam Jun Paik and TV Lab licensed to create. Okay. And you'll get an idea of the excitement. A video art that was By, in, in the you, early you know 70s. Did you Paul Ryan? I did not. I told you. No. Oh, I'm sorry. I said it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay here, here we go. And That's the logo. Here we go. Okay, here we go. If you're lucky in life, you will encounter some magic moments in time 
when you know what you're doing is exciting and to some degree is needed. There's a part of me that says there'd be no MTV without video art, there'd be no digital video on your desktop without video art. No, there'd be no real penetration of media as a demystified something that people can play with if not for video art and the TV lab. We knew we were doing something that nobody else had ever done in the world. How exciting is that? Yeah. Imagine a television series that combines performance, documentary, it's very good money in it, drama, and video art to create a mix of experimental local and national programs there she is. that revolutionized Who is that Billy? Win major Bill Murray? awards oh, Bill. and build significant careers. Yeah. That was the TV lab at Channel 13. WNET. You remember Marshall that? Television. I remember oh, that. Yeah. You were there, huh? All that? Yeah. I, I, okay. Good buddy. Yeah. That's her with. Is that the television? Yeah, that's the much yeah, more right. Yeah. The bottom line is much more important than any kind of artistic creation. Sometimes I hope that webcasting will open a door Mission. to the kind of creativity that we and you knew him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Quite well. That we enjoyed, you know, back in the mid seventies. Michael Schamberg, I was a friend. To, is fast he was a friend. The channels on television, mm -hmm. okay? In real time, high He was a close friend video, of uh, Ryan's. That's Ryan, the beginning yeah. of the future for video. You tell me when that's going to happen, and then you will have another revolution. I guarantee it. You have to understand that the context, okay? You had three national channels, period. There was no portable cameras. People did not have access to this technology. It was a tight kind of controlled a fixed world and, and things were done in a certain way mm -hmm. so when young people when artists when uh, uh, social activists uh, coming out of the late 60s realized that this new portable equipment was going to be available and probably take us into the future they immediately saw political social and uh, artistic creative uses of that technology Korean born avant-garde musician and video artist Nam Jun Paik was crucial to every aspect of the television laboratory. Trained as a musician in Japan and Germany, Peck adapted audio synthesizers to co-invent the first video synthesizer. Hmm. Chuya Abe, a Japanese electronics engineer, designed and built one of the first video synthesizers. Hmm. Using inexpensive black and white cameras, they devised a special color encoder that in effect allows artists to paint electronic pictures. Mm. Paik envisaged it as a video piano at which the artist could play and compose the new music of today. I want to make time visible and time you can grasp each section of time and put on space. That is our dream. There's no one like Namjoon. Namjoon yeah. really wrote this medium and it was very much because of who Namjoon was, the brilliance, the genius of Namjoon, that the TV lab was created and continued. Artists already do something which mainline culture don't do. And since Hollywood and then NET is making so many interesting shows, artists has to make boring shows. And suddenly if Hollywood and NET start making very boring shows, we will make exciting shows. <laughs> In this it's world, going like an ordinary yeah. people, extraordinary people, I'm glad there is you. It was not just a flash in the pan. We were talking about a genuine phenomenon, and uh, it has broadened everyone's vision. Too sad to open your eyes. Of the ability to manage people. It was highly controversial. I mean, and obviously there were many people who said, <laughs> I don't want that sort of thing on my television. Yeah. It was a time of great ferment. M, M Squad, uh, yeah. Where the young people were the ones that were really kind of leading the society. In that context, the conditions here in a public broadcasting station was, let's open the door and let's experiment. Anyway, Boy, that was great. That was really good. Yeah. Well, that's just yeah. the beginning. Yeah, of this. yeah, I'm sure. And yeah. I have been working on it forever, uh, off and on. Yeah. It's, you know, it's so easy to start these days, but mm. very hard to finish. Be oh, really? Okay. Sure, yeah, because yeah. to finish something, yeah. 
you know, there's got to be an ending. Well, no. no, no, no. It's not so much that. You don't know. It, it's that um, you have to you have to do a, a, a fair use assessment. You have to do a. What does that mean? Fair use. Well, assessment? Uh, you mean other people's stuff? You yeah. Mean, yeah. Right. And and, and the rights. You have to, you know. Acquire. Is that a good system we have worked out pretty much in terms of uh, re respecting the rights of people to do copyright and all that kind of thing? Is that a good way uh, we've got I, it worked out, or, or have you got some questions about? Uh, Access I to think information and stuff. In general, it's good, but I, I have a problem when something exists yeah. in a form. Like a piece of art? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That it shouldn't be dismantled and forced to. Uh, it should allow it to be on its own. Yeah, I think so. It, 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 it's complicated, but. Yeah. Uh, I, anyway, but. But there's the legal, there's the there's the technical. Yeah, all that stuff comes all in. All the stuff it? that comes in. Because the money comes in, right? Yeah. And how factor? How much does the money factor into the things that are going on creatively and so forth? Well, uh, you got to have some money to do it, you know. Yeah. But but it's um, uh, more than you'd like. I mean, I'm I'm afraid because it seems to influence an awful lot of things. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got to have a budget. I, I you got to have a budget. I had a budget for a documentary yeah. I did. The first documentary. Um, what was that? If well, I no, not, not in my first document, no. but oh. a documentary on net learning, on online education. Oh, wow, that's huge. And I did yeah. that, and we had $1.1 $1. 1 million from the Sloan Foundation. That's really a lot. It that's was a lot. A of lot money. Yeah. Except that was, it was all budgeted for a 90-minute documentary, and then public television said to us, we want two one-hour documentaries and one and a two-hour documentary. Wait a minute. What you want? Two one-hour documentaries? It's got to be two hours long. Yeah. But it's got to be packaged in two different ways. As two one-hours, and as a as, as a, a two-hour piece. Two hour piece. What, what, okay, that to and fit into their scheduling the or something. Or something? A third of the stations were only wanted a two hours, and nobody wanted a ninety-minute because then you're leaving you, something out. How do you fill the time? Yeah. Well, that never was a problem in the early days. Because, and I don't and understand. I don't understand. You well, got a two-hour piece, uh, two hours. One is two hours. The all budget once was for ninety minutes, so you had to stretch it uh, to two hours, uh, and then you had to package that in two different ways. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's does the budgeting get in the way of the creative or not? Or we just made it on this one, but it uh, it does a lot because. Uh, also, I mean, even the great artists of the past had to have. Well, they had patrons. They had patrons or yeah. something, You're right? Like that. I, I need a patron. Right. Yeah, I need a patron. <laughs> I wonder if there's cre there's more creativity around than we think. Maybe among the people who are trained in education to be sort of uh, cogs in a wheel of money making or job potentialities. Well, there now are you have to be in the corporate world. You have to be a self promoter. You have, you have to, to be develop a promote. brand and all this. A, a brand. A brand. Yeah. 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 You know. Well, that's like for advertising. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. And I think I think you're in better shape if you do that. And then you branch out. You mean out. economically? Yeah. Yeah. There's more market for that. Yeah. But when you start out as I did, and I didn't, I started out doing work for hire. You know. Oh, you did. Sure. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. You make were up for sale? No. No, no. But I mean, I was. <laughs> I was in jobs. I'm making a joke. You, you know, I know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. But you know, mm -hmm. it's like you don't realize all these things. Like there was union protection yeah. only twice in my career. The Writers Guild. Thank mm -hmm. God I'm a lifetime member of the Writers Guild. Yeah. But when I worked at 60 Minutes, yeah. they paid me. But all the years I worked for Sunday Morning at CBS, I had to sign a contract that said whatever I did as a producer yeah. encompassed my uh, writing skills. You're dealing with big companies for you know yeah. sixty minutes, all that. That 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 that's big time people. That was only because big time interest. Yeah, you say, yeah. But when I was at, but the times changed because when I was yeah. at uh, Channel Seven. Yeah. I don't know that's what it local. is now, but they they were a member of the Writers Guild, so we were all signatories, and that's how I became. Uh, Gil Noble was part of it. Gil Noble was there. Yeah. He was a great guy. Yeah. He was a real good reporter. Yeah. yeah. I liked him a lot. Yeah. He was a reporter, a straightforward reporter. Yeah, but then he anchored uh, Like It Is. Yeah, Like It Is was a very popular show. And one of my big discoveries was <coughs> Roseanne Scamardella. 
I know the name, but I can't place it. Well, because Gilda Radner parodied her as Roseanne Rosanna Dana. Oh, is that where I, <laughs> is that where that was? Yeah. And right. I got to work uh, with uh, Melba Tolliver, mm -hmm. who was the Don't first know. black yeah. uh, correspondent. God bless and, her. Yeah. And she's great, and we did a few things together. Um, one program on the early years of the women's movement was called Consciousness Rising. And it was said, "Watch out!" <laughs> it, it said it was too subtle for television, yeah. according to the Village Voice. Yeah. And I worked too with too subtle for TV. That's funny. the most yeah. famous mm. thing I did was with Milton Lewis, and yeah. Milton Lewis was a Herald Tribune reporter. I don't know who yeah, had okay. a yeah. slogan on TV. Said, "Now listen to this." Now, and that was his tagline. That line. was his line. Now listen and to this. Milt had written some scripts. Yeah. And I shaped them into uh, what became a ten-part uh, series of, of uh, specials, which we made into an hour documentary About called me. Scoundrels, Scalawags, and Saviors, <laughs> The Good Old Days at New York City Hall. <laughs> And we showed Are it. Are you at, serious? I am that, serious. Was that on the label? Was that? That's it? the whole oh, title. Oh God! And that's we showed wonderful. it at Gracie Mansion. Yeah. Oh, good for you. That's and, wonderful. And the Lindsay administration. Did you have a party after. I would oh, think it's great. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, a lot of fun, right? Yeah. You having a good time always? No. Well, most of the time. Most of sometimes, the time. you know. So you're very creative, really. Yeah. You're very creative. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about the uh, tendencies of the society toward their creative to people in their society? In general, do you think they're thought of as uh, what? What you know, you've you've, well, you've I've been with a lot of creative people, right? And you've been part of a creative community, right. and So forth. What's the role of the create <laughs> the creative well, ones let, let me, among us? Let me show you this as relates to the citizens in general. I mean, okay. You know, in answering that, let me show you. Yeah. Okay. You got more. Uh, okay, yeah. By all means. Yeah. Uh, this more. More. Eli more. noise. Yeah. I wanted one of the things I loved about the TV lab was it encompassed all the arts. Yeah, yeah. And here I didn't have an animator. Was that thirteen? Was that it was channel, yeah, 13. channel thirteen? Yeah, yeah. God, thank God for thirteen. Yeah. Absolutely. Have mm -hmm. you seen the thing they're doing on BBC now? Yes, oh, here I was we go. Known someone as a wacky filmmaker, whatever, and I was invited by David Lockton to come up and do something with the TV lab. <laughs> <laughs> Do something. I had never worked in video before, although I had just bought myself a porta pack. Porta pack. Because those things were amazing. You, know, you put this thing around your shoulder and you, you, you thread the half inch black and white tape it. and you pick yeah. up this thing and you shoot your friend doing something crazy and you run over to the TV and you look at it. It yeah. felt to me like the yeah. future. Yeah, right. And I wanted to be part of the future. Yeah. I took enormous chances. I said, it's an experimental TV lab. I'm going to experiment. <laughs> it was a wonderful opportunity, and I am really forever grateful to David Loxton at the TV lab for letting me do that and actually probably making an ass of myself. Uh -huh. I did. Uh -huh. We uh -huh. were kind of a new, young generation with a lot of hubris that we weren't trained. We hadn't gone to film school. We just thought, pick up a camera and make a film, have fun, and let's, let's make the world a better place. Hadn't Anybody gone to film school. school. And they're all pouring out of these film schools with these amazing abilities. But it's lonely, too, because you make this little film in, in your garage. <laughs> what are you going to do with it? You put it up on YouTube. I love the guy. Up yeah. on YouTube, even pictures of their dogs doing tricks. And is there a community of people that will encourage you and, and teach you how to be better? And is, is there anybody like David in an institution of the TV lab or WNET to uh. To, uh, to to celebrate what you're doing? Oh, God. He reminds me of so many of my friends out there that, with that attitude. I wish he was yeah. still around. Beautiful, yeah. Mm. All right, <laughs> yeah, that's good. So that's I, very good, yeah. Yeah. I, God he, bless the artist. He yeah. hadn't restored his videos when I first yeah. approached him yeah. in 2008. Right. Okay. And then then I heard that he had, and he w came to New York and uh, had a screening at the School of Visual Arts. So mm -hmm. we, we showed that, and then we... Was I, that on 23rd? Yeah. What? That, that's not on 23rd Street? No. It is, yeah. It is 23rd. Yeah, but this yeah, is like 21st or 22nd. Or yeah. Some, yeah, yeah, right, right, yeah. right, 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 right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I used to have a connection there or something. Yeah. I forget. Yeah. yeah, but anyway. So anyway, the, the thing is, I've, I've had a lot of students edit this. I've had 
and and I and I love him. And uh, recent graduates, uh, one from the Maryland Institute, uh, Maryland Institute College of the Arts, and they actually one of the few places that teach video history. Video history is one thing, but video art history is another. Well, I know. But yeah, both. But How is the video art scene doing now? Or well, it's, it's let's say, what's the relationship between video art and film art? I think it's moved. Well, it, there's more video art now, but but it's yeah, it's videos moved, is free. Sure, it's moved yeah. to museums, which is good. Television. The if you know, I, I went to an exhibition a few years ago at the Jewish Museum. Yeah. And you looked at TV in the '50s and mm -hmm. the '60s, the very earliest years. And they were doing films of the arts. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean films of like Michelangelo and stuff? Well, no, no, no. Just, you know, Eileen Saarinen was reporting on the arts. A oh. lot of different things. Uh -huh. and, and CBS was, was very creative. Yeah. It's, you're not likely, except for Sunday morning where I worked at CBS, yeah. there are not too many programs that do films culture. about art. Yeah. And culture, Real cul yeah, right. right. They don't. And what does that say about the human condition or something? They're looking for, there's an awful lot of selling stuff. On oh, those. yeah, yeah. We, on my cable television, we got 1,998 channels. Did you really, I mean, is that something like what you have in your home? Or do you notice? Have you checked we, them we all have, out? We, we have <laughs> too much of a lot of things. No, no, but that is, you yeah. know, that's a lot. I mean. And I did mention to you before uh, this Attenborough thing. Yeah, the BBC. Have you seen it? No, I haven't. Magnificent. Yeah. And they've got pictures of things. I want to know. <coughs> When they go down two miles into the ocean where nobody has ever, ever, ever been, and mm -hmm. they've got to have all lights and they've got to do that, and they've got these staggeringly gorgeous pictures of creatures that are there in living color and high de it's a, I'm wondering, are those really cheating where they're, they're, they're going to take a video, pre a, a video composition of what the science tells us they would probably look right. like and do it as a digital thing? Or are they actual pictures? They got pictures in there. Know. They got pictures in there. You believe that could never be got? Well, there. It's th magnificent. The problem is BBC, the world. Yeah. Well, BBC has always had always. a focus on Attenborough, the Voice. It's so, it's so a documentary yeah. and drama. Too. Yeah, yeah. The BBC yeah. always has been the leader. Yeah. Uh, in we haven't done so much in this country. We why why well, do we, we let the Brits time. go well, ahead of us? Carl yeah. Sagan. Carl you know, Sagan. The Cosmos. Was great. We, yeah. Jacob Bronowski did. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He was yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. So he comprehensive too. Yeah. Full, well, Fuller was in that vein you too that week. Well, yeah. But, but, not, but we yeah. don't have on a regular basis. No. I mean, when I got into this. Yeah. NB you, yeah. NBC yeah. had like four or five documentary units, and I was a college student, and I could see that there was the West of Charles Russell. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. there was. Fire Rescue. I don't know what you're talking about. All these, these about. were classic documentaries okay. that were about history, that were about arts, that were about... Like Nanook and stuff? Uh, politics, yeah. And that, yeah, yeah. A lot of things. Yeah. Well, and see, that's sort of like what the BBC thing is doing, but it's just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. I was watching it, I could not believe it was so gorgeous. And I mean, and what about having the store of human knowledge done by multimedia? Are we taking the uh, lessons of, I had a thing the other day, something I watched, it, it might have been a thing of 60 minutes, I don't know, but the, 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 the interesting of, uh, well, let's see, Michio Kaku, and you got people who are physicists and so forth, and the store of human knowledge presented visually, seriously, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, uh, rather than it all being in a book or something, but it's pretty, uh, the store of human knowledge being presented to the future in multimedia. Well, I, th I, I think with, you know, you know rather than in writing. Ricky Leacock. Yeah. Who's Ricky Leacock? Richard Leacock. He worked yeah, for Flaherty. He was, uh, he was Flaherty's cameraman. Oh, really? On Louisiana Story, Flaherty's wow. last film. Okay. Oh, that was. And okay. a friend of mine in, who's in Paris, Jane Wiener, used to yeah. live here, yeah. uh, some, uh, made a film about him. Uh huh. And in the film, the, uh, he, he finished his memoir, <laughs> which was called <laughs> Being There. Mm. Well, that sounds like Woody Allen. Well, he, no, he wants to be, <laughs> be there. Mm. On it, and, and what it was, was he developed the technology mm -hmm. to put video into a book. 
and it was before the iPad. I don't understand. What do you mean, video? Well, no, it was so, so you could you, you could be reading, and all of a sudden there'd be a click, and, and there'd be a video. Well, you could be that on a cell phone. Now. Well, you can now yeah, you can yeah, do you can that. Do it, yeah. yeah, but but easier yeah. to read on an iPad or something. Yeah, more yeah. This way. but how about getting rid of the book? I no, wonder no, if you're not going. Look, look what's happening. Maybe they could get rid of the book and literacy. Cannot. You don't think so? No. And 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 look what happened. Look what be. happened with. Um, I wouldn't want it. With well, maybe. I mean, when 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 uh, audio, uh, what do you call it? When, when electronic books came in, yeah, I thought, oh, this is great. And then I said, no, I don't want to read late at night. You know, looking at a, a, a screen. How about not reading? No, you want to read. You do? Yes. You think so? It's not just a prejudice. No. There's a prejudice connected with these things. You know, in that. Well, it's linear Pete. thinking, and that's what McLuhan was on about, you know, and yeah. then we're getting out of a literate age, and that's what ha that's the only thing we had. Yeah. I mean, Gutenberg gave us some print at that. Yeah. Before that, was storytelling or something, and we had to get uh, literature, and they probably, you know, used to have good storytellers. They didn't have to have any literacy or anything written. They had to memorize everything. Well, no, they could tell a story. You'd just been telling a great story well, about your you, life sir. thing, and it was just spontaneous, yeah. and it was there. And then the store of human knowledge, you could just present uh, like that thing the BBC's doing. There's not a, there doesn't have to be a single letter of the alphabet in three hours of the most and with the voice. It's just magical. And then also the footage. And so the store of knowledge in physics or in anything, you could do it without Particularly, are they ever going to get to where they're going to translate the 7,000 languages of the world, one into the other simultaneously, <laughs> so you could present something and it wouldn't have to be one letter of the alphabet involved because it could be translated into Swahili for Tanzania or whatever. Right. And you could have the store of human knowledge done multimedia because they don't do anything but sell stuff for the bylaw. Most of what the media is about is trying to sell uh, crackers or something, <laughs> you know, and it's to get the bottom line, isn't yeah. it? Oh, isn't it, you think? It's far Don't too much you think it hasn't been given its due, the, the potentiality of multimedia uh, as a place for the store of human knowledge into the future? Well, let's hope we get there. I would hope so. If it did, it's <laughs> going to be people like you that get uh, us there. And I the mean, art is what would, would, would lead it, you know. Yeah. So what are you up to now? Not at this moment. I don't mean you have to avoid the rain, okay? Right. And I'm glad you brought an umbrella. Well, I it's am. It's a sign uh, <laughs> of a good thinking ahead kind of thing, right. you know. And you're not, yeah, okay. No, I, I'm trying to fundraise to complete. Uh, Which one? Nam June Paik and TV Lab. Oh, good. Sister Gray. Yeah. I am uh, working on a script for a documentary called "The Fight to Vote." The Be fight. What is that about? That's you about women. No. no. No, it's about black. All the. No. Uh, the broadening and restriction of uh, voting, you know, yes, from the beginning, yeah. we always thought, you know, only one vote, one white vote. men of property should ha have the vote. Right? Who else? And we said no. Vote, yeah. We need all men, and then we said no. We need all women, and then we need all races and all this. So this has been a, a point of contention. They keep including more and more people. Yes, but they also try to restrict more. When do we get to where the dogs have a say? <laughs> and the cats. My uh, cat uh, wants to say, I'll tell you, that's for sure, you know. But, yeah, yeah I understand. So anyway, I'm working yeah. on that. And uh, what else am I doing? I'm doing something else. I don't know. Hmm. Uh, are you optimistic for the human prospect? Are you worried about the fact, as it is reported by various places, that uh, we've got, I don't know how many, but it's mostly in our Trident submarines. We have a capability of destruction, which is undreamed of uh, before Mr. Einstein or any of those kind of things, mm -hmm. that apparently, by and in particularly with uh, the germ things and things that have, the, yep. the, ways, the ways we've been able to invent weapons to kill each other, it's gotten so well now, and they'd have things, and they have adding it all up, that if they were unleashed, it, we, we couldn't have done that any time. But if they were unleashed in a spasm of irrational hatred, it would mean perhaps in terms of give it a couple generations or something, the end of the human species. That We have species lethality built into our weapon system that we've used to define whoever's going to lead the planet and the leadership of the planet in realpolitik and everything. I, uh, it's a certain possibility. I d would never have thought it until the more recent Well, events. it's only happened just yesterday. Yeah. 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 
and it's major. And is there anything on the positive side <coughs> uh, for the flowering of the creative spirit rather than just the acquiescent uh, attitude of the serf on a feudal estate that's been encouraged by the leaders over time who've always been in the castle on the hill while the masses were wallowing around in the mud? Well, I mean, is there a hope for real, honest-to-God justice for all and fulfillment mm -hmm. of the creative capability in everybody yeah. that aren't, aren't uh, uh, cut down in the name of education or something for some practical purpose to sell crackers or something? Something, you know? Yeah. Or well, what do you think? Are you optimistic for the human prospect? Yeah, because I think the even when you're you're most pessimistic, you realize that the human being is naturally creative. You think so? I think so, and I think that when those qualities are treasured and nurtured, yeah, they will grow. Don't you think we ought to do it for everybody? Yeah. Why do we limit it to so few that we allow to have that kind of a thing? Now, some of them just emerge out of good family or something or whatever. It used to be only the kings in the castle were there, you know. But remember, it was the nobles that rebelled against the kings. Well, that is true. So now we need... That is true. That was a process, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. And then we rebelled against the whole idea of uh, feudalism in mm -hmm. the terms of the United States. Now the world is demanding something beyond what we present. We, the leadership, with our trident submarines and our political mm -hmm. power based on military power, where we go walk the world with big league boots and so forth. And so uh, we're at a time of maybe qualitative transformation that we've been born into. Qualitative, not quantitative. Yeah. I, I mean, may we live to see it or not? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know, if nothing, I, I really think you should be doing shtick, my brother. I think <laughs> you should be on the say doing shtick because you are one funny guy. Well, and I really you. enjoyed this thank talking you. to you. You really, and thank, thank you, you for, for inviting such, me. Such a very, 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 very well led life, young man. I thank appreciate you. that very, very thank much. Thank you very and much. And it's been your pleasure to have the possession of this Howard Weinberg and his interesting life, his distinguished, this, and that's true. Go, go to Washington and see this Nam June Pegs. Go to Washington and see the thing that's behind us. Is it going to be done? Is it's, it done. It's, it, it's, it's done. It's done in and Washington. And there's Alaska and Hawaii over in the corner. I think that's a... <laughs> that, 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 oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. More. Yeah. More. more. There's more. Always more. There's yeah. more. Thank you for viewing. We're coming back again, uh, well, tomorrow. And uh, thanks to God for such a well-led life and everything. It's a delight and everything. And I do think you should take up serious, uh, you know, on stage... Uh, thing. Move over uh, all those <laughs> comedians. Just get up there and uh, sh do your stick, okay. you know, because I think you're really uh, not only funny, but a very warm and beautiful human being. And I thank you thank for you, all your God. work. Thank you. Thank you for viewing. We'll be coming back again well tomorrow, but that's it for now. So Howard, thanks again once more time. Thank you My very, pleasure. very much pleasure. indeed thank for you. such a well-led life, young man. Okay. Thank you. Good night. We'll see you next week. Ah. We have 20 seconds. Say we something. Have 20 say seconds. something wild. Say no. Say, wow. something, say something creative. Quick. Um, <laughs> Turn the camera around. And see our director. It's very yeah, nice. Yeah, <laughs> right. Well, that's good. That would be good. Yeah, we ought to do this. Time that the ladies got their due, don't yeah, you think? Absolutely. absolutely. Don't you think they really are right in doing that? Well, I was quoted once to say, "Women are carriers of civilization," due. and I yeah. think it's true. You said what is? Women are carriers of civilization. I think that is probably and I think true. Yeah. yeah.